Hello everyone, social distancing, Lawrence here filming out on my own in the woods with the Mondrecker F-Podium DCR. This is the downcountry version of Mondrecker's full suspension cross-country race bike. This is the same frame as that's raced in the World Cup when that actually happens again this year, maybe. Um, anyway, what they did is they upforked it. So they put a longer fork than standard on. So you still have 100 millimeters of suspension in the back, but you now get a Fox 34 step cast in the front with 120 millimeters of suspension, making the bike more fun, more playful, slightly slacker, sadly also making the seat angle slightly slacker, but it makes the bike more capable in steeper stuff. And especially with how technical cross country riding is becoming, um, this is really going to be like the future of cross country bikes. Some say that down country is a stupid name and that it's basically just a short travel trail bike. Um, with this, actually this is more a cross country bike than it is a trail bike. Uh, I would probably call it a, a cross hill instead of a down country bike because it's really good at climbing. Um, that's because it's a full carbon frame, so both the front triangle and the rear triangle and the rocker link all made out of carbon. Um, this does mean that it's more expensive, more difficult to manufacture than a horse link style bike. Uh, and so you can see that in the price. This is 4,700 euros, I think. And it, comes with some uh, some rather budget finishing kit so the dropper post that's on off 125 mil according to the website I actually think it's 150 just looking at it um, but as you can see there's a lot of stand over here and a lot of room to go with longer dropper posts I could easily run a 210 mil dropper post on this bike this is a size large by the way and I'm 1 meter 84 um, the head angle has been made slightly slacker now to 66.8 degrees um, that's great for just yeah fun cross-country riding it's like you go for a cross-country ride but you're having some fun in the process um, but mounted to this awesome fox 34 is just the on off uh, handlebars um, 760 mil wide uh, and a 60 millimeter stem on the large and extra large and then you get a 50 millimeter stem on the medium and small sizes but what kind of bothered me more with this bike is the brakes so it comes with shimano mt501 brakes they're not bad they're definitely not bad brakes but on a 4700 euro bike you kind of expect something slightly better with maybe an xt logo on there or something uh, but the brakes aren't bad they're just not what i would quite expect and that's probably because the frame is more expensive to manufacture same with the dropper remote it just feels like a very budget dropper remote and even my brand x dropper post has a nicer remote now obviously they had to work around the lockout so you can lock out the rear and the front uh, with just one button and unlock it with another um, so that's really cool but it does make the bike look a little more cluttered than it could be if they added something like that um, SRAM twist lock lockout thing that I had on the track top fuel um, comparing it to the top fuel the top fuel is more of a downcountry bike in that it's really fun on the descents now don't get me wrong this bike is really fun on the descents but it's even better going up a hill or on more flatter terrain so here in belgium this bike is actually even better than the top fuel but if you end up somewhere a bit more hilly and you want to have some longer more gnarlier descents um, the top fuel is probably better um, so the riding i did on this bike has been limited uh, sadly because of one the weather and then the next week after we're not allowed to go outside anymore that's also why i'm filming out on my own here um, but I really did enjoy the riding. The bike is incredibly efficient. It's very fast. Um, so I really noticed that just coming to the woods here, I had the suspension open, not even locked out with two cameras, two tripods, everything like 15 kilograms of camera gear on my back and it still pedaled really well. So it's super efficient. Um, what I also noticed is I was no longer hitting my heels into the seat stays at the back. That was a problem that I had with the previous Mondrecker bike that I tested, but that was an e-bike and an enduro e-bike so that's probably why this one just super comfortable to ride the suspension feel in the rear is very plush at the start but it ramps up really nicely i wouldn't really say that there's a lot of mid-stroke support because there's 100 millimeters if it's supple at the start it's just going to go straight to the end stroke um, so it's not that it has like a really good mid-stroke support you just get to the end of the stroke at the like 80 90 percent treble feel and there it really catches you so i can't really fault the suspension performance the bike is very nicely balanced uh, and especially again riding this sort of area it works the dream when you take it to somewhat rougher stuff you do notice that there isn't quite enough travel anymore and you can only do so much with 100 millimeters in the back uh, but it is nice and plush and hitting cobblestones really hard or just roots and stuff it's very comfortable very efficient 
um, but again you do blow through that suspension quite quickly because there's only 100 millimeters of it overall i really enjoyed riding this bike it kind of sucks that i can't ride it more with the whole um, health crisis thing going on but there you go guys stay safe out there and if you want to see more content hit subscribe and like and all that sort of stuff that youtubers tell you i'll see you guys in the next one